All right, welcome back to Missing Persons TV. I'm Brian Ladd with my co-host Deborah. Uh, today is Sunday, June 21st, 2009, uh, 9.26 p.m. We are going to be discussing three cases from earlier this year. They are cases number uh, 681, Amber DeBose, 683, uh, Damaris Lopez, uh, and case number 686, uh, Ross, Roshni Chander. And then we'll be discussing that case. I did the case the other night, um, case number 770, uh, Brittany Stevens. Um, I have Deborah on the phone with me, and I ha also have Kevin Doyle. How you guys doing? Great. Well, that's good, Kevin. Deborah, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Happy Father's Day to you, and happy Father's Day to you also, Kevin. Yeah, same here, Kevin. Happy Thanks, Father's Day, and, and ha happy Father's Day to everybody else out there. Um, how was your weekend, uh, Deborah? Busy. <laughs> it's busy this time of year at my house. Um, you know, my, my kids being in their late teens, and actually I have one that's no longer a teenager now. She turned 20 today. Oh, so, happy, um, happy birthday. Yes, my Dawn is now 20. 20. She's so grown up. Yep, anything anything exciting happens? This year and she'll be starting her third year of college in the fall, so she's a busy young lady. Anything exciting happen? There's always exciting stuff going on here. My life is never dull. <laughs> okay. Um, I went uh, I went catfishing last night. Uh, I, I caught uh, well, I caught two catfish. Uh, my neighbor caught four. Uh, we split them up and we barbecued some catfish today, and uh, barbecued a black snake. And we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, <laughs> just we need to eat snake, uh, and it was delicious. Um, we tried rattlesnake too, and that's also good. So that's what we did today. We had a barbecue. Um, we had chicken too, um, and that, that's really about it. Kevin, how was your weekend? Oh, it was okay. Um, trying to remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> mm. It's kind of like a blur. I did so many things. I had to <laughs> get a neighbor's weight machine into my house mm -hmm. yesterday. And I helped somebody move some things. It was just one thing after the other. It just kept me busy all morning and all day, and went to bed at a decent time actually. So it was a good good day. Okay. Well, I'm glad everybody had a, um, a nice and safe weekend. Uh, Deborah, earlier we were talking about uh, you were talking about a case, uh, not not necessarily a missing person case, but something in the news. Did you want to bring that up? I was actually talking about a few of them. Which one would you like me to talk about? Uh, the one with the baby. The, well, the, the, the one that said they had a baby. The fake baby. Mm -hmm. That one. The online scam. Um, I'm not sure how many of the viewers, listeners, viewers have um, heard of uh, little April Rose. But her mom had been blogging for months. And... She was a poor single mom and expecting, and there was problems with the baby, and the baby was only going to live for a short time after birth, just like a matter of hours or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, what happened was she decided to blog about this, and she, she had, like, millions of people reading her blog. She had a blog on um, Blogspot. Mm -hmm. And it's called littleoneapril.blogspot.com right now. It's got an apology letter up there from her. Mm -hmm. um, she talked about how she was going to carry baby April Rose to term and have her. And, you know, April Rose would pass away. And, you know, because she doesn't believe in abortion and, you know, things like that, even if there's something wrong with the baby you know, is that drastic, and and so, you know, she talked about being a Christian, and I mean, she really got a lot of attention from people, and it turned out it was all a scam. There was no baby. Um, she was on Good Morning America. Mm -hmm. I think it was the first weekend of this month when she actually supposedly had this baby. I'm looking it up and right now. I see a picture. She posted afterwards. There's some blogs out there um, and, and a lot of things on forums and stuff 
she posted some about um these photos came from a, a website it was pictures of a doll but apparently she was saying that some of these photos were post-mortem and stuff too yeah, and that's kind of distasteful. I mean, just think was of this all the to bring attention to the was it to bring attention? Let's say maybe the the abortion rights activists and stuff like that. Anything to do with that, or this is just something she attention based? to it? I don't think so. Okay. Um, because she actually, in her apology letter on her blog there, because she took everything else down, she talked about how um, she thinks she may have hurt that cause. You know, she wants that you know to remain a good cause and stuff. Apparently, she suffered loss in the past. She's like 26 years old. She had a loss of a child, I believe, when she was in college, and then one like a year ago, something like that. But I just, who does this? She, and, and people uh, well, are sending her stuff, and, and people are just all over this. But think of the women that have suffered loss. Well, she you know, probably has some mental, mental issues, though, them. dealing with the, probably, probably the, with the loss of her previous children, then. And, and maybe just... I don't, I'm, I'm actually reading reading the article right now. Yeah, obviously this woman has a severe problem, and she says she's getting help, but this is just mind blowing. And, and people just followed her blog. Tons. Yeah, of I'm reading the pro pro abortion or anti abortion groups were uh, promoting her blog though. That's how she got so popular. So it was right. it was a lot of her popularity did come from um, um, pro life life organizations. Um, and that, well, and here, I can't which included some of actually quotes. do something like and that and even give this big say, baby a name. Anti-abortion messages and a soundtrack of inspirational Christian pop songs. So I did have something to do with that too. Okay, what what is that? I have no idea. It's not here. Nice song, I guess. Um, hmm. Let me figure out what, what, what what's going on real quick. It might be it might be a website. It's coming from a website that I that I just visited on that K. Hold on, guys. I'll fix that. I'm not finding anything here. No, I, I just, I just, I just. Want, oh, I went, I went to that blog though that you were talking about in this case. And then, he's, but what I'm talking, it's going away. Okay, let me let me try to fix it. Uh, this is really strange. This is technical difficulties, isn't well, it? Well, I went. I, I went. You know we, were what? we were talking. You know what? I had a website open for a really long time, and it is it is here. Hang on. I had this open for quite a while. Okay. Well. Before even started broadcasting, it was. The Bring Amber Home website. All right, Deborah. How does music kick on way after you? You are fired. Right? You're fired. That's it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I was trying I to think. Was like, I was like, I was. I went to. The, I, I shut it down. Open. Well, a lot of times when you go to. There's no music. Well, a lot of times when you go to blogs or something like that, there's music playing. That's. that's I thought it was coming from that. Uh, and that the, the case we were just discussing. So I shut down the blog real quick. Um, but apparently that wasn't it. So. Sorry about that, guys. Good song, though. Well, you get music earlier on when you get somewhere. <laughs> you know, when you get to a site or a blog or whatever, you get it sooner. How do you just sit without it for a while and then it kicks in? That's weird. I don't know. Because I had that tab open for Amber before we ever started broadcasting, and it took that long for music to kick in. Hey, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can bring attention to. Anyway, that is the wonderful music at bringamberhome.com. For Amber Dubois. Okay. Missing from Escondido. As a matter of fact, let's let's just jump right to that case then, since since we're here. Um, okay. Well, really... now I'm gonna have to pull something else because I don't want to turn the music on. There's no off switch. 
Oh, okay, well, go right to it, and if it starts playing again, um, I don't know what to tell you, Debra. <laughs> no, I'm not. No way. Um, oh. Well, you got to find something. Uh, a a anyways, so Debra, find something. Uh, the, the first case we're going to well, – actually, since I have a picture up, let, let's discuss these three cases now, and then we'll go with a new one. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Right. I'm pretty sure I can have something real quick here. So. Okay. So, so our, our our first case we're going to discuss tonight is, is case number 681, uh, Amber Lynn DeBose. Um, the uh, the case was opened February 23rd, 2009. Uh, Deborah has the information for Amber. Um, right, Deborah. Yes, I do. Okay. And that so that's the music that we we just heard is is for Amber's case, which is good because that's good. That's actually the first case uh, that we were covering anyways. Right. What do we got? Like I said, that's from the bringamberhome.com website. Okay. Um, Amber I, and well, Dubois real, real, real and quick, bring Amber home because I don't have that on the case file. Right. Uh, this was not the original site set up. They set this up a while after she'd been missing. There was one earlier on. Um, but home. this one, uh, I, I'm i sure you don't have it exactly. Okay. Yeah, we do, we do have a link to the, we have a link to the forum. Um, and let, let me let me check it out real quick too. Uh, go ahead, Deborah. Okay. Well, Amber Leanne Dubois has been missing since February 13th of this year. She is five feet five inches tall, 140 pounds, has brown hair and blue eyes. She's missing from Escondido, California. Um, just you know, going from memory and from working on this case and covering it and doing redos and stuff like that. Uh, I do remember that she had, um, the, the day that she went missing was a special day for her. She had a check with her to pay for, um, wasn't it a baby lamb? I think it was a lamb. Uh, yeah. For her FFA, the Future Farmers of America group. Mm -hmm. And um, on her way to school that morning was the last time that she had been seen. Okay. So, um, yeah, and missing from Escondido, California, which is uh, quite near to the border, you know, for, for Mexico. Um, there was a lot of searches. There's been a lot of creative things done with Amber's case. Um, motorcycle um, riders, um, bikers have, have ridden. They, they've done rides trying to raise money. Um, you know, that's something that you don't see in every case. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and they were... They got to even that pretty early on. Her parents pretty much do anything. Uh, there was some speculation after, a, a bit after she went missing, that possibly she'd gotten herself into trouble online. You know, and her parents talked about how she didn't use a computer and she just loved her books and, you know, all that type of thing. She's 14 years old. You know, um, most 14 year olds spend quite a bit of time with a computer. Um, it turned out from them forensically going over a computer from the home. Um, you know, some friends had said that, you know, there were some things that were inappropriate, you know, that she said in chat or something to some guys online possibly, mm -hmm. but they were not able to come up with any evidence or any, you know, exact leads to point them in any direction there. Um, there was also where they were um, looking for See, they were looking for a vehicle that had been. Are you doing all this vehicle. out of memory? Yeah, I'm doing this wow, all out of memory. Okay. Now, okay, the good, vehicle good. they were looking for was a truck. Okay. And I'm calling up that here. Um, yeah, there was a truck, and it was not too far from um, the school, her high school there. And um, we actually had it in on video surveillance. They were trying to find out who that truck belonged to. Um, I remember getting emails also uh, talking about what was going on in California. Not just that there's other young women missing, you know, young ladies missing in the same age bracket and in the same areas of California, but that there's vans cruising the streets in those general areas mm -hmm. trying to grab. Can you, do you remember when that happened? Mm -hmm. And you did a redo and you worked on for Amber and Pebbles Jace and who's the other one? Uh, Marlene Chapalis. Yeah, this this case alone. Well, we think this case is related to 688, uh, 690, uh, and 712. Sandra Cantu is on here too. Right, and then when when um, we were looking at um, 
something that was emailed in by Sandra. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Mm -hmm. uh, she emailed to you uh, something for Jesse Foster's case. Mm -hmm. And you sent me links and you know you shared the email information with me mm -hmm. and yeah, they, then uh, I that a name that you had on a, on a dream drawing mm -hmm. was very similar to the name of a hotel on a website connected with that information in from Tijuana, right? Right. And that in information Tijuana, came from uh, uh, Craigslist. Right. And, and when we looked at the um, that website for that um, for that bar, mm -hmm. and they talked about, you know, getting busy up the stairs in the hotel or whatever. The name of that hotel is very close to the same odd spelling as um, what you came up with when you did a redo for Amber, Pebbles, and Marlene. Mm -hmm. It's listed in there. And it looks almost identical, the spelling. I think it is. And, um, I think, well, what we had done... Um, is we we actually downloaded all, all the pictures um, from Craigslist uh, for the Craigslist Tijuana um, to see a, a lot a lot of victims of human trafficking um, their pictures are put on Craigslist um, so we're trying to yeah, this is every missing person that we suspect could be human trafficking and there are a lot of them I think I think Amber's case is related to at least three or four other ones um, and we found a location uh, actually I did and uh, Deborah who found who found that uh, the hotel. Well, actually, I found the hotel, but who, 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 who was who sent the uh, the pictures? Sandra's Sandra. Uh, Sandra's Thank you, Sandra. in chat, and um, Sandra's nephew. Um, in a sense, Richmond Yanez actually he goes by Sean Yanez mm -hmm. is missing her yeah. nephew, and so she joins us in chat quite often, and she sent information in after there was a show with Glendine Grant on it, mm -hmm. and she was looking at Craigslist, seeing if any of the um, for Je this is this was for Jesse Foster. On there looked like Jesse Foster. Right. Yes. What what had happened is, um, you know, I thought that picture looked pretty similar to Jesse, and I really think this is a great idea. If, if you guys have time, um, you know, get you a list, maybe four or five people that, that we think or you think or please think are victim of human trafficking, um, and then uh, and we're we're doing the ones that you know we're missing from like Las Vegas and California. Uh, guess what? Now you're doing it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice at question, least, at least, guys. At least, Check it out. I'll put the I, link. I was, I was, I was going to blame you. I've got the link. I put, did put the website, the link to the website. Um, that's that's bring Amber home. Um, but back what I was saying, this is very important. I think that um, this is something we can all do. Um, get you a picture. Go on to uh, Craigslist. Um, Craigslist has has ads uh, for a lot of solicitations. A lot of a lot of women, uh, and a lot of times their pictures included. Um, and if you if you think somebody looks similar to some of these photographs, please please notify notify local authorities or anybody that's related to this case, because I think this well, is a really the first photo this is a really good way to find people. Jesse Foster recently, either right. a couple days prior to this, mm -hmm. um, we had Cindy Macklin's mom, and Cindy Macklin is 16. She's been missing since January from Bay Cliff, Texas. Mm -hmm. Her mom, Deb Hilt, um, sent me a link, someone that she thought could be. Jesse Foster on a Craigslist. She right. was looking to see if she could find her own daughter. Right. And she saw one that she thought looked like Jesse, so she sent it to me, and you know, I, I sent on to Brian. I, I shared. And anyways, with, what I did. You know, this and shared with Glendine, and what she does is, you know, in both instances, she felt that it was not Jesse. You know, being, you know, her mom and all. She she really didn't think that either one of them, you know, those mm -hmm. young ladies were Jesse in either of those instances, but she does send that on to the detectives and to the task force for them to check it out and be sure and, and rule it out because, you know, they're the professionals and they look into things. Right. So um, that's where it stands at this point. Okay. So anyway, so you, you sent it to me. Um, I, I actually looked up the, uh, the phone number, was it? I looked up something. Uh, Anyways, you look for uh, the name of the bar. Uh, yeah, she, found, okay. The name of the, the, name yeah, of the bar. bar. Okay, the name of the bar. Yeah, she mentioned that in her Craigslist ad, so you found the bar's website. Right. And one so, led to another because she talked. She gave the hotel name. The hotel name was given on the bar website, wasn't it? Yes. So that's what I was trying to say. So anyway, so I sent that to you. I didn't. I didn't even know about this. Uh, the, the far as the hotel name being in the dream drawings, uh, until you brought that up, Deborah. So anyway, it's all of us working together. I think in this case. 
we, we found a location that at least may correspond to my dreams, uh, and, and I really think that hotel should be checked out. We're going to put a link to that hotel in there um, on the case. Well, it's not in there right now, but let, we need to do that, Deborah. So let, let me cover the, the dreams that are on here, um, the dream drawings on here, and uh, we did we did do a couple shows that weren't really related. We're, we're about other cases we thought related, so we did bring up her ca Amber's case, but let's let's do it in full now, okay? Right. Okay. Okay. So the dream drawings uh, um, from from just, uh, February 23rd of this year. Uh, the first one says just across border, uh, Cali uh, digital camera. She has it in the number 37. I think we've worked out that the word Cali means street in uh, in Spanish. Um, at, least, at least I think that's what it meant. Uh, then well, then it gets it says Cali safe. And there's a drawing of a two-story building. Um, looks like some type of maybe it's a shack or some some type like that. But it maybe has another structure on top. It's, I mean, it does look like some maybe like a shack, possibly in Tijuana, like we talked about before. Uh, notes say uh, reports say she was missing from Escondido, California, using Google Earth. I did find a Cali Road, and that's when we discussed that uh, Cali Road means road. <laughs> so there's a lot of locations for that. Uh, Dream Drawings from February 28th of uh, 09 says two door Tijuana six and the letter K, which I believe is kilometers southwest, and the word Cali again. I can't stress that enough. These are different dreams and different nights pointing to the same thing. Um, and it was says seem to confirm. It, notes say seem to confirm uh, first DDs uh, from the 22nd. There is a road again called Cali, and it is in the city of Tijuana, Mexico. Once again, there are other roads named that. But it's going back to Tijuana. Tijuana is just across the border. It is a hub for human trafficking. Um, we did a show on the 20, on uh, March 1st, show 27. Uh, we mentioned that case. We, on March 2nd, we mentioned this case. March 3rd, we mentioned this case. Uh, on March 6th, I did a redo on this case. Um, and this says, uh, Kitchen H1, Hotel 1, Amber is here, the number 805. And it could possibly be the same drawing that was above. Um, and the notes say, I think this is a kitchen in the same trailer in the past DDs. So possibly, maybe I was thinking that was a trailer. Um, yeah, that could be a trailer. Uh, either way, trailer, something like that, um, in Tijuana. Uh, and then the information we just brought up, um, uh, what, uh, uh, what Deborah said. So we actually have a name of that hotel. So if anybody's able to check out the hotel in Tijuana, um, you know, not not just for Amber's case, uh, uh, for, for a lot, I take every every missing person with me that, that is suspect um, of being human of being trafficked uh, for for prostitution um, because this hotel that's what it is. Uh, we looked that up. That's definitely what it is. Uh, Kevin, I have your notes from the 18th of this month. Would you like to read those? Uh, yeah, sure, Brian. I have uh, this is for Amber Leanne um, for my meditation. I have uh, dead. Abduction, white male, 30s, earring, tattoos, 170, 190 pounds, hair below ears, used a large stick or bat to help kill me. He rides a bike and, and knew of me. Body and bag buried in ground, maybe dismembered, lurk or lurch street. 7 or 17th Williams Road or Place building between okay Williams Road or Place between two buildings and my notes after the meditation um, I now have incorporated when I can the pictures of missing persons in my meditations that means uh, I, I not only I not only not only use the person's uh, the missing person's name uh, when I do a meditation, but I'm also trying to uh, whenever I can get the person's picture and add it in there as well to look at the picture and not just the name and try that. Uh, but in this meditation, I believe that I connected to uh, Amber, and in order to also possibly receive new information concerning this missing person case. So I believe that all information from my meditation is from Amber here is basically what I'm saying. 
um, a white male in his 30s who rides a motorcycle or bicycle uh, may have murdered Amber. And I also added other notes to this case. Um, my son came in the room after I had done this meditation and I, I had him look at the picture of this missing person. And I, I didn't tell him who it was or what was going on. I, I, you know, I asked, I, I said, uh, what do you think about this person right now? Um, and he says, oh, she, he looked at it for a second. And he says, she looks happy. And I go, okay, this is a missing person case. Um, now, can you try to search your feelings again and tell me what you think? And he said, uh, he feels that Amber is alive, scared, and doesn't know who to turn to. And that's all I have for this case, Brian. All right, thank you, Kevin. I have your notes posted um, on the case, so it is public. Everybody can read that. Um, I don't see anything as far as uh, um, what you have. Did you find anything in common? Um, I've, I've got one more DD to cover on this, too. Uh, did you find anything in common, anything that was similar between what you did and what, what we've done so far? Uh, offhand, no. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll continue to look. Uh, and again, if you have any input, um, wherever it comes from, we really want to hear it, uh, and, and we'll, of course, post it. Deborah, I forgot to mention there, uh, there, is, a, there is another redo per your request, Deborah, on uh, April 2nd of 2009. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that real quick. Uh, this one says, uh, they have him. Children will no longer be taken from uh, the uh, FLA. Uh, that could be an acronym. Uh, the number one two uh, one six two one one three, uh, Valoa, Bose, Landing Strip, Mexico. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that means. The, ne the next one says, uh, uh, Cali. There's the word Cali again. They were taken to warehouse uh, in the number seven, only Ch Chinchilla or whatever. The, that's the hotel I think we were talking about. I'm actually positive that's the hotel we're talking about. Uh, one six uh, one nine. Six three two, uh, and it says the word. It says the word two cases. She will escape. Uh, Deborah in Boulder nineteen. Deborah, that might have been something that, something for you to uh, maybe pick up on. I don't know. Um, but that that's what else I had on there. Deborah, do you anything? Do you have anything else to say on this case? Um, actually, that last redo that you're talking about, I I think was the one that was prompted. Um, by that email when people were very upset with young ladies being missing and also the vans cruising around, people was cruising around and trying to take young ladies. There was one not far from where Amber went missing that was able to get away. Right. Um, and I do I do know the word about okay. And I do know the word Cali does mean street, so I mean I know there's a lot of them. Um, but uh, that uh, chin chin whatever level that's that's that was done on um, on the second, actually Dream Drawings is April uh, first. That's 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 where we think that it could be that hotel, correct? Exactly. And when I saw do me favor on, link to that hotel again. I, I went to map. I'm going to put that, that up right now. Mexico as a city, and I found something that was similar in spelling. But then when I saw that website for the Adelita Bar, it just stuck out to me because it was so odd. Skype me that uh, the link to the hotel, would you? Um. You, you remember. I think I know what it is. Or, or we can go do the same search again. It's, it's the number one return. Um, here we go. I'm going to... It's the, the, the link for the, um, the Adelita Bar website. And right near the top, it references the hotel. Okay, I'm gonna. That's going in the case file right now, so that's public. Um, that's where I think she may be at at this, this, at this moment of time. Well, this uh, really. The good, really the, the good thing is that she could be. Could she, be lots of them there. She could if be If anyone safe. checks out this website, the first thing they're going to see is Adelita Bar, Tijuana, Mexico. Adelita Bar opened its doors in 1962 and is the number one tourist bar in Tijuana. The beer is cold and cheap. Many of women. Rooms upstairs at the hotel, Cohila are $11 for half an hour. Yikes. Okay. I mean, you can tell exactly what type of place that seems to be. Well, there's no doubt. We, we, we know that. Um, 
and, and what I'm saying is we really didn't need to, to uh, you know, I guess all we have is Craigslist, and they do, and, and lot, it seems a lot of things are posted on Craigslist when it comes to prostitution. Um, uh, we need people um, to, you know, do, doing like Saunders doing, um, to, to go through these lists, look at these pictures, and see if there's any similarities, and if there is, you know, report it, somebody's able to make that determination and investigate the case. Okay, I have now, that. Sandra has said that there are a lot of sites like findlocalkitty.info mm -hmm. that you can find listings on and see their photos and everything. So okay. if, if anyone there, is willing to, to check that out, that um, information comes from, from Sandra. And if you see anything that looks like, you know, a missing person, please alert. Well, one other thing, this bar, this, uh, bar website actually comes with a... Uh, a little extreme tracking thing on the bottom. You are, yeah, if you, if you click, amazing. If, if you click on that thing on the bottom, <clears throat> if they actually, I don't know if they knew this, um, but it actually shows you uh, their traffic patterns and where all the referrers are coming to. Um, this this could be a gold mine of information for for people to know what to, to do with it. Um, if you look on the if you look on the website on the bottom, there's a little extreme tracking icon. Um, that, that shows you where everybody is visiting this website, where they're coming from, if they're using the search engines or whatever, um, including IP addresses. Um, uh, you know, I mean, that could be some information that may be useful to somebody. Um, but it's all up there, and I'll put a link to that on there, too, uh, in including the bar there, too. PC's locking up again, Deborah. so go on. Oh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Sing a song, tell a story, or something. Sing a song? No, I, that would chase everyone away. I don't sing very well at all. Okay. Um, tell a story. Well, well, gosh, I could talk well, about. We, we can keep go back uh, in. The, okay, go ahead. Um, uh, well, I'm saying, um, so on this case, once again, I stress it. I think it's really important that you know, if you guys want to help, uh, find go to these MySpaces. Uh, well, especially Craigslist is probably the number one uh, for something like this. But but in any other place that you might find, um. Uh, you know, pictures of, of, of women that, um, and the computer's better now, too, um, that, that, that could be the victims of human trafficking, and look for these pictures. Um, uh, and, and especially around these, you know, you know in Tijuana, I mean, is, is a hub. Uh, you know, so is Las Vegas, so is uh, uh, New York City, so is Chicago. Uh, there, there's a lot of places. Um, and if you have any questions on any of that, go to uh, uh, CIA.gov. They have a lot of information on that. Go ahead, Deborah. I'm sorry. Well, so, uh, there's another place that you can um, learn more things about human trafficking. I if you'd like more information in general on human trafficking and, you know, links to, to different things besides the CIA.gov one, uh, you could visit findjessie.com. Um, that is run by Glendine Grant, who is Jesse Foster's mom, and Jesse has been missing for over three years now. Uh, she's in her 20s. She's missing from North Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, Glendine posts a lot of information regarding human trafficking. She is just constantly busy online and in every other aspect of her life, uh, researching, looking for her daughter, spreading the word of others that are missing. But she has a lot of really valuable information. You can find it there or, you know, by checking out the links to her other places that she posts information to, to her blogs and to the jessiefoster.ca website so there's a lot of really good stuff out there to find thank you Deborah okay anything else we have on this case no I don't think so okay I, I put it up uh, I put a note that that uh, Amber made maybe at this hotel uh, right here let me get them so people know, know exactly what I'm talking about All right, let's move on. Our next case of the night is case number 6083. Um, uh, th this is um, Dermias Lopez. Um, the case was opened uh, February 26 of 2009. Deborah, what information do we have uh, for Demires? This is for Demaris Herrera Lopez, and she's been missing since December 10th of 2008. Uh, her date of birth is October 29th of 1998. 10 years old, Hispanic female with brown hair and brown eyes, 4 feet 8 inches tall, 78 pounds, missing from Yuma, Arizona. She was alleged 
forcibly abducted by her mother, whose name is Crystal Abren Lopez. There's an FBI unlawful flight to avoid prosecution warrant out for Crystal Lopez. Uh, they issued that on January 13th of this year. They say that they may have left the country and traveled to Mexico. Asmaris has a birthmark on the inside of her forearm and the abductor, her mother, Crystal Lopez, may dye her hair black. Um, in this situation, um, they it seems like even though Damaris is still missing, they have been able to confirm that Damaris is with her mom and she is in Mexico. Um, I have an article here. She's with her mom, then we can then the case is really close then, right? Uh, no, because she took her out of the country illegally. Okay. All right, go ahead. She does not have custody. Um, what happened was Maris's brother got involved. They put him in the um, they put him in jail for in the Yuma County Adult Detention Facility for fraudulent schemes, custodial interference, false information to law enforcement, and contributing to delin delinquency of a minor. Um, they do have similar charges, just like that also for Crystal Lopez. Um, the brother is 18 years old. Uh, his name is Richard Alvarez, and he's from Arizona also. Um, right now, uh, FBI is involved, and the Yuma Police Department in Arizona is, and they're trying to locate exactly where in Mexico, um, you know, that Tamaris is with her mom. Um, as far as an exact location, I haven't been able to find anything that lists that for me. Uh, if somebody has more information than that, if they could post that in the forum, that would be wonderful. Um, but the bottom line is Damaris is still missing because her mom did not have custody and should not have been taking her out of the country. And they've got warrants out for her, and they threw the brother in jail for helping with the scheme. Okay. So, yeah, she's still missing. Um, the, uh, uh, are you done? Yes, I am. Okay, I have, uh, one, two, uh, three dream drawings. The, the first one says, uh, uh, the number three, uh, and then this is a drawing of, of a church, I believe. Uh, maybe the top of the church, the steeple, and at the top is a cross. Uh, it's not just a normal cross, it's got some of the things on the end of the cross, whatever those, you've seen them before, it's drawn on the page, it's things on the end of the cross. The second dream drawing says, uh, uh, it is with her, and then the word M-E-N-A, Mena. Uh, and then this, I believe, I think I think I talked to you about this before, Deborah. This might be a rosary beads or some type of uh, uh, jewelry. Definitely de definitely religious. Um, and then the next one says, she went with Stephen Sarmente. We'll be back on March 29th. No uh, tear. And that's all. And it says, be back on March 29th. I don't know if that meant, you know, if she was going to be found or not on March 29th. Maybe Maybe something had happened on March 29th. I don't know, um, but the note said I think that um, Damaris is uh, uh, is safe and could be home on March 29th. Obviously, that did not happen. So um, um, that's all I know. Anything else, Deborah? Uh, no, I don't have anything else for Damaris. Okay. Um, just you know, anyone, if you have more information than you know what I have brought up, if you could please post it. We'd be most grateful for that. We sure will. And please, please go to missingpersonforum.com. Uh, all these cases are there, uh, and even more cases are there. Um, if you have any information, please post that there. Um, again, if you're psychic or, or and you want to help in this in these these cases, you know we really do need your help. Um, Kevin, I've got your notes. Uh, would you like to read those? Sure, Brian. Uh, my meditation for Damaris uh, Lopez is alive, in danger, abducted, HC helicopter, Bravo Zulu 612. My notes after the meditation, this person, this missing person could be in danger, possible HT, which I abbreviated to mean human trafficking, uh, BZ612 could be part of a helicopter or something else. Uh, my other notes, uh, once again, my son came back into the room and was looking at what I was doing, and I showed him this picture of this same missing person that I did, did the uh, meditation on. 
and I uh, informed him that this person is a missing person. And my son looked at the picture and said that he feels that she has been hurt and is barely alive, and that's all the information I have, Brian. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, I think we talked about this. The, uh, that number could be the tail number of the uh, aircraft, but I think they, the ones in the United States start with an N. I don't know what it starts. It starts like anywhere else. Uh, so um, th th that's good. Thanks, Kevin. Got a, got a number there. In, go write that down twice. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. All right, let's move on to our third case. Um, this is case number uh, 686. Um, this is for Roshni Chander. Um, the case was opened on uh, uh, March 2nd of 2009. Deborah, what information do we have uh, for Roshni? Uh, Roshni Chander, 22 years old, has been missing since February 17th of this year. She was last seen by her dad at about 6.45 p.m. And she was last seen as she was leaving uh, the family's home at they call it Mar Marylands, and that is in Sydney, Australia. Okay. Um, she was last spoken to in the early hours of February 18th, so, you know, in the wee hours of the morning, apparently. And at that point, she said that she was at the Gap, which is called Watson's Bay. Uh, police searched that area and the surrounding area, and they did not find anything. And um, they say that she requires daily medication for her asthma, so they're concerned for her welfare. And she's described as being Indian appearance, 180 centimeters tall, slim build, dark shoulder length hair. She was last seen wearing a gray jumper. Um, this case here is one that there's not a lot of things out there on her. It was um, initially requested in the forum for the case to be opened and this one is pending for a redo that is going to be one of the next ones coming along here because um, you know she she's just been missing since this last February and they still have not been able to locate her or locate any you know traces of her a few things that I have seen um, you know posted about her um, you know they're not saying you know definitely that there was some sort of foul play involved and you know, there's not say, they're not saying that there wasn't, you know, so they really don't have answers out there at this point. So uh, hopefully um, Roshni will be home with their family soon and uh, safe and unharmed. And what do you have on Roshni's case? Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Deborah. Um, I have uh, three dream drawings. Uh, actually, no, I have two. Um, these are uh, from the second. Um, first one says uh, uh, called her once only it says called her only once number 314 St. Mark's and number 37 there's a drawing here of a man looks look like he could be actually a father um, like, like in a religious sense um, uh, looks looks pretty young uh, short kind of maybe spiked hair might be dark complexed um, maybe 37 years old too Next one says, deck of spirit cards. Go to the river. Three people uh, will be there. Um, I don't know what that is on the bottom. I'm not exactly sure what I drew there. Deck of spirit cards. Go to the three people there. Uh, you know, looking at this, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if, she, if she's alive or not. There's no dr no drawings as far as the uh, some of the symbols that I have, but it says, go to the river. Three people will be there. I mean, I, I hope she's alive, but I don't I don't know. Um, Kevin, I have your notes. Oh, would you like to read those? Sure, Brian. In my meditation for this particular missing person case, I have dead, multiple abductors, mostly male, ages 27 to 36, Mike, John, um, Rachel, H.T., British area, Scotland or Scotland Yard. In my notes after from the meditation, this missing person could be dead. HT is for human trafficking. Body could be in Europe. I believe that Scotland Yard is a law enforcement agency. And Scotland, the word Scotland could be anything. And that's all I have for this case. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Sorry about the graphics are getting out of control here, but... We'll have that fixed tomorrow. Okay, our last case of the night is uh, 
case number 770. This is for uh, uh, Brittany Page Stevens. The, the case was actually opened uh, June 18th of 2009. Um, Deborah, what information do we have for Brittany? Okay. Um, Brittany has been missing. Brittany Page Stevens has been missing since June 13th of this year. She is 15 years old. Uh, she's missing from Marion, North Carolina. White female, 5 feet 4 inches tall, 135 pounds, light brown hair and brown eyes. Um, she is listed now at National Center for Missing and Exploited Children as a non-family abduction. Um, the first day that her poster went up, and um, it was just a matter of days ago, the first day that the poster went up, they had her listed as an endangered runaway but they did have it listed that she was allegedly abducted by someone. And then they did change it to a non-family abduction the next day. Uh, now they say that she was allegedly abducted by someone named Edgar Soto. They did issue a felony warrant for kidnapping for him on June 16th, uh, so three days after she went missing. They say that they may be en route to Texas. They may be traveling in a white 1991 Chevrolet pickup truck with North Carolina license plates TBE6700. Uh, Brittany has a scar on her upper left leg and on the back of her neck. They advise caution in this situation. Uh, it says caution advised in big capital letters. Um, I really hope we're not dealing with with someone who's dangerous here, which, you know, that's what it, that usually means, obviously. Um, his name is Edgar Escalera Soto. Um, he is 25 years old, uh, so what a 25-year-old man is wanting with a 15-year-old child, I don't understand. Um, but that's the situation here. Um, this guy's um, Edgar Soto. His date of birth is May 29th of 1984. Uh, they list him as being from Mary, North Carolina also. He's a Hispanic male, 5 feet 9 inches tall, 155 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. And uh, what do you have for Brittany? Uh, thanks, Deborah. Um, I've got I've got two dream drawings and some work that um, I asked Gail to do over the phone. I've got those notes there too. Uh, the the first dream drawing says uh, uh, safe uh, water bottles, very tan, uh, and then uh, the letter N, the letters N V I, Rover Falls, and then in four days, four days from this date would be. Um, 21 would be today actually um, today's the 21st um, the second one says uh, road 58 McDonald's drive through uh, Hoosier Park now I do know that Hoosier means uh, there's a lot of things like that in Illinois uh, th that's all I could take from that um, and there, there, there's a drawing here of um, could be a flag or, or could be a window with an accent or something like that I really don't know uh, so anyways, I talked with Gail. The notes that, uh, from the conversation are uh, Norman, Indiana. Um, Deborah, were you on the phone with me when we did this? No, I was not. Somebody was. Okay. Um, the word coacher, or coacher, C-O-T-C-H-E-R, put a question mark there. Uh, and then uh, Cooper, Illinois. Um, and she, I think she thought that she could be uh, in Cooper, Illinois. And that's all we got on that. Um, Kevin, I have your notes. Uh, would you read those, please? The meditation I have for this case is uh, a runaway dead 617 accident, accidental death, Cindy Nose, Charm School, Ricky. My notes after this meditation Brittany could be a runaway and may be dead accidentally. Uh, somebody named Cindy and somebody named Ricky could be involved with this missing person case somehow. I don't know what charm school means, and that's all the information I have for him. All right. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, as, always, as, as always, I post your notes on there. Um, and we're done for the night. Um, Deborah, unless you have anything else. I just don't forget Ozzy. Um, I wasn't. Um, You know, I, I'm, the, the graphics are a little bit different tonight. Um, don't have I don't have Aji loaded. I'm really sorry. Actually, I have a graphic here with his picture. 
that'll work. Uh, this is Achi Desir. He went missing January 10th, uh, 2009, from Mockley, Florida. Uh, so far, there hasn't been anything uh, uh, reported on him. There's been no sightings, as far as we know of. Um, but basically, no one's going to know. Uh, no one's going to have a sighting if uh, uh, no one knows he's missing, and that's the big thing um, that we need to, to fix um, today. Um, let's get his picture out there. Go go to the website findachi.com um, and print his picture. There's a PDF uh, photo there you can print, and please post that everywhere. Um, you know, Aji went missing from Mockley, Florida, but doesn't doesn't mean necessarily he's still in Florida. Uh, he, he could be anywhere. He could be in Mexico. Uh, he could be in, in um, Jamaica. He could be anywhere. So the the most important thing is to get that picture out there. Uh, and then again, contact the media to you know the demand that Aji this year uh, get the attention he deserves because this is absolutely ridiculous. This child uh, is six years old. Uh, he has the mental cap capability of a two year old, like me. Um, and it, this is this is uncalled for. He really needs uh, some attention, and in the media, getting his picture out there is the best way for it to happen. So many people are found when you know when when the pictures are flashed across TV, and everybody in the world sees. Deborah, I completely agree. Um, so for anyone who's willing to help get Aji's the media attention, please visit findaji.com. Like like Brian was talking about, you can find lots of things there. You could print a poster and hang it in your vehicle and drive around with Aji's picture because who knows, he could be where you live. Um, anyway, there is at findaji.com, there are the links to the contact pages for local and national media. If you have a little time and you're willing to send some emails, please ask them to give him some coverage. We would really appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Um, thank, thank you guys. Um, thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And remember, our shows are from Sunday through Thursday now at 9 o'clock. Uh, remember, that's East Coast time in the U.S., and I believe it's minus 5 GMT. Um, either way, if you, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. So good night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.